The third and final race of the weekend at Hidden Valley and with the grid for this one it's an aggregate result from the first two races so Grant Johnson and Kim Jane who've both seen a chequered flag first this weekend will square off from the front row. And Kim Jane's confidence he'll be riding high after a great drive in race two and Jack Ellsgood and Andrew Fisher the only four drivers in the top ten. Steve Hodges from 15th picked up a 30 second time penalty from the last race for that contact with Craig Dondas for a dangerous re-entry onto the racetrack. Greg Willis starts from 25th and he also picked up a 30 second penalty that was for that contact with Warren Millett at turn one. Are you telling me ten and a half years in the officials are actually jumping on these guys? There's <laughs> officials left, uh, penalties left right and centre. Well someone's got to start giving them out but it doesn't seem to curb the enthusiasm. It never will either as I said ten, ten years in it has never changed. And what hasn't changed this weekend has been the dominance of the Commodores. Johnson and Jane, front row. Ellsgood and Pither, second row. McDonald and Fisher are on row three. And then Harris and Scott Jennings, who has had a really good weekend. This is the decider. Race three of the weekend in round three. And it's all about getting the jump. And it's pretty even between the front row. You could not get any more even into turn one. But now on board with Chris Pither, who's got a great view, but Jack Ellsgood. Johnson's got the inside, Pitha locks it up. 32 Utes go into first turn. How many come out? Oh, it's Kim Jane, really sideways. Cole, he's lost ground. Cole Tyres had a little bit of trouble getting the power down. Now Andrew Fisher. Oh. Oh, that was always going to happen. Chris Pitha in the door. But that's really good racing. They both gave each other room. It's always going to be tight through there, side by side. Off into the dirt now, his teammate in the second. Oh, man, I don't actually know what to call. There's so much happening. DBA in car with Fisher. That is McDonald and Harris. So Johnson's the leader. Ellsgood is up to second. Oh, big problem here. Ryle Harris, some smoke from that damaged Commodore. And that damage is actually from race two. And it looks as though he's not shy on adding to that. I mean, he's figuring when I get back to the workshop, they have to replace the front left. Might as well tear it up a bit more. Everyone sorting themselves out on this first lap. G Cedars in the new line forward, the white one right there. Really loose as he wriggled it down the essence to the final turn. Craig Donis with Paul Williams behind them. The lurid yellow Falcon of Ben Dunn, the storage king car. Welcome aboard with Andrew Fisher. Oh. Look, oh, there's a gear there somewhere and it took a while to find it. That was a sloppy gear change and not something you can afford to do this early in the race. And limping down the front straight, there is a problem there. Ryle Harris, the white Commodore, has got huge problems. Back up front though, Grant Johnson. This guy is just in awesome form, has picked up the support this weekend of Regal Transport. Jack Ellsgood there, just a little bit. Oh, there's been a rollover. Why don't know? He's just up on two wheels. The bonnet's flapping around. Not sure if he's gone right over, but, geez, that looked frightening when the camera switched over. Geez, Aaron, hope he's all right. That's Peter Burnett, who has come to grief down at turn one. Johnson's clearing away. The fight for second is really on. And, oh. yeah, that's definitely been over. Have a look at the damage to the roof. Here we go. What happens on the Okama replay? Just tags the back of Jason Gomesall and tags... Oh, and the wheels interlock. Pretty gentle sort of a rollover for a rollover. But that that would actually be a shock if you're in that car. Not something you'd ever expect. OK, he spun the guy around. Gomesall's let the car roll back. And as you said, he's just climbed over the exposed front wheel of that Blue Falcon. And that... Boom! That first bounce. I mean, shake him around. I mean, I think he'd be all right, but... This is in car with Burnett. Oh! Jeez, that's first-hand frightening experience. He's OK. Look, adjust the mirror just to check that everything's OK. That's how shaken the guy is. I mean, to think, to think your first reaction is to go <laughs> to the mirror and adjust it. Well, he's getting out of the car with that unassisted, so he's OK, but that was... That could have been a lot worse. That brings out the safety car in race three. We'll have a chance to clean things up. Oh, Steve Hodges has got some problems too. We'll be back with more. We're back on the road. Race three has been restarted at Hidden Valley in Darwin. Pacemaker in car is with Jack Ellsgood. And he's not really worrying about chasing down Grant Johnson because he's more worried about holding out Kim Jane.
He said earlier in the show that he wasn't really keen to just accumulate points, but currently he's just not got the pace of Grant Johnson, and holding on to second will do his championship hopes a whole lot of good. Now, you're a two-time champ in the youth category. Where's Grant Johnson finding the speed? I think most of it's come from confidence, not just the driver, but the whole team. When everything clicks and you're on a high, it's a confidence game. And at the moment, I think, particularly on the back of Winton and their good result, they're just running the, the wave of confidence. And Johnson is away. There he goes down the straight. Reese McNally off the road, the Rookie of the Year contender. He's got to cost himself some spots. It's a great shame, too, because this weekend, David Cedars hasn't had the best of weekends, and he is leading the Rookie of the Year standings. It was an opportunity for McNally to capitalise Ah, this is what was going on. Yokama replay gets in the back of George Elliott. Do you reckon there's some payback coming? Oh, George Elliott, uh, guaranteed there's a payback coming. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, what can I say? I don't think the officials are worried about that one. Tit for tat. Back with Charlie Kovacs, the Wilson Security Commodore has got them all lined up. How about Jeremy Gray, the rock star Falcon? That wasn't terribly rock star, that was a stage dive. Mate, he'll be shaking in his teeth now because the, the both front tyres will be flat spotted. Same now for Paul Williams. Again, late in the race, the heat here at Hidden Valley really is torturous on these Yokohama tyres. But at the moment, Gray's hanging on. Ben Dunn, Storage King Falcon under fire from Gary Baxter. We haven't seen much of Baxter this weekend. The Sage Auto Motion Commodore has had a really bad weekend. Sometimes it's your weekend, sometimes it's not for Gary Baxter this weekend. He has had a crocker by his standards. And he actually broke the steering rack in race one. Some contact with David Cedars. So you have drama early in the weekend. It's so hard to recover. Very, very hard to recover. Unless, of course, with the new format for race two, where they reverse, well, an unknown number of cars. But for Gary Baxter this weekend, that made no difference at all. Jeremy Gray, a debutant this year. He's another driver fighting for that Rookie of the Year crown, taking over the car that previously was driven by George Medici, who's off in the United States now as Baxter makes a lunge on Ben Dunn and we will get it done. And if that rock star Falcon gets past him, you can say he'll be feeling grey. See, it's as bad as yours, Noonan, but let's turn to the action now. Jeremy Gray is putting the pressure on Ben Dunn. The Storage King Falcon has been a little bit loose through turn four. Locks up the left front. But here's Kim Jane pressuring the second place car, Jack Ellsgood. I'm still getting used to Jack in white. So used to seeing him in Cooper's green for so many years. Hey, at Winton, I saw him. He's prancing around in his new race suit. He'd had the Cooper's pale ale green suit for about six years, and finally he's fronted with a new suit. Quite pretty, Jack. I'm just grateful that it's not clear. The suit, that is. And you are hitting me for humour. Anyway, Kim Jane, what a cracking job all weekend. He's been fighting for some form in the previous rounds. Pretty ordinary um, result, I guess, in race one, but he has fought back now to be challenging Jack Ellswood for the second spot. Not challenging, taking, going for it at turn one. This was the place where he launched the move in race two to get the lead and the win on the last lap. He won't quite get it done this time around. Just behind is the ice coffee break Commodore of Chris Pither. What we saw there was a classic example of the Holden has got the performance advantage in a straight line, but the Fords traditionally have been just that little bit stronger under brakes and proven again there. Kim Jane thought he was half a chance. He's locked up the brakes. Jack Ellsgood, clear as anything, clips up the apex and gets a good drive off the corner. But the guy who must be absolutely grinning as he comes out of the hairpin and sees these guys on the opposite side of the road is Grant Johnson. He's got them absolutely covered. For a final lap of a V8U race, only 12, 12 laps to extend that lead. That is a dominant performance. There's Pither in fourth, Andrew Fisher continuing that consistent fight for the championship. And look at that, don't you love it? The final lap of a U race, the battles continue right back <laughs> to about 11th or 12th spot. Ben Dunn into the back of Gary Baxter, Gray's behind, then Ben Cabbage in the work Workhorse Falcon. And that's a good recovery because they had a right front brake caliper failure in race one. No failure from this man, it is all about success. Grant Johnson takes race three and does it in style. Ellsgood will hang on for second and Kim Jane, great weekend for third. It was a great weekend for Kim. I just can't help but think if he didn't lock up that break at turn four, he may have been a chance with Jack, but it wasn't to be. It's all about the red boxes. The Commodores dominate in Darwin. Jennings and Kovacs in the top ten. The blue boxes, though, were just outside the top ten. Charlie O'Brien, Giannis Derrams,
and Gary Carson rounded out the top 20. Steve Hodges had an up and down weekend and Nandy Kiss will not greet the finish. Grant, there's something about the top end that obviously agrees with you. That's your second round win in a row and it eases the pressure a bit in the championship as well. Yeah, well, we um, didn't didn't start the championship really good with the uh, DNF at, at Clipsal, but um, we've, all, we've had a really good fast car since the start, so it's good to actually come away with some points and um, really keep, keep the pressure on the rest of the guys.